New into stock, we've uh, got something here just a bit special. It's a BMW 7 Series 4.4 750Li long wheelbase saloon. It's a 2009 on a 58 plate and it's done 45,251 miles. Cost new, £86,000. It's got £19,800 worth of extras. Cost new, that is. Um, I'll go through you, I'll go through them with you. Um, I'm going to have to read them off a list because there's too many. Uh, I've also listed them in the description. Fuel economy, urban 17.2, extra urban 33.2, and uh, combined is 24.8. A 0 to 60 time of 5.3 seconds out of what you can see is a, a massive car um, and pretty weighty too. Top speed of 155 miles an hour on a 407 brake horsepower engine with 32 valves. Now then, let me go through the spec. It's got 19 inch radial spoke alloy wheels, integral active steering. I'll explain the active steering to you in a, in a short while. Reversing assist camera, boot lid operation, and that, that's powered open and close. Comfort access, the steering wheel moves out of the way when you get in and moves to your set position. Um, soft closed doors. There we go. Just open them first. You close them, you don't have to slam them, you can just push them too and it, uh, it shuts itself. Fine wood trim, ash grain anthracite. So I'll show you that too. Massage functions in the rear seat backrest, which is awesome. Uh, some blinds to the rear windscreen and, and rear side windows. It's also got privacy glass as well. So you, nobody's gonna see you in this. Um, seat ventilation front and rear. So you've got heated and cool seats as well. Uh, comfort seats front, comfort seats rear. Comfort seats front, 1191 pounds and comfort seats rear, 1839. So it's, um, Electric memory seats, front and rear. The, the rear seats recline. As I say, it's a fabulous thing. It's certainly fabulous to be a passenger in. Um, heated rear seats. It's got lane chain warnings, which I'll, I'll show you. Side view cameras. You can, when you're pulling out of a junction, there's a little camera here and on the other side, and you can see it on the screen. So when you're nosing out and there's cars there, you can see anything coming, so you don't pull out in front of them. Adaptive headlights. The headlights, when you turn the steering wheel, the headlights move with it. So you, you're not turning into a, a, a dark alley or something. It's illuminated. You see what you, where you're going. Uh, rear seat entertainment, BMW Professional. There's two TV screens in the, in the front seat headrest or in the back of the front seat headrest. Uh, and the big screens as well. They're also controlled from the, the panel in the, in the middle again, which I'll show you in a second. Um, USB audio interface, independent rear telephone, there's a telephone in the rear armrest and you can Bluetooth in the front, um, TV function, heads up display, you can see your speed, you can see the signs, uh, what, what speed limit you're in. in, that's displayed in the windscreen. Loudspeaker system, BMW for professional, the sound in here is, is phenomenal as well. Uh, exterior trim, high gloss shadow line. So it's got this uh, gloss black trim around the windows instead of the chrome or, or, or uh, matte black. Um, sun protection glass and thermally insulated glass. So I'll, I'll show you around the car and I'll, I'll tell you what those features do uh, as we go for a drive in it. So you've got the, the alloy wheels here, multi-spoke and the, the very, very good condition. Bearing in mind the car's nearly 10 years old, very good condition. Um, as I say, you've got the soft closed doors all round. Got power opening boot lid, and it's also power close. Reversing sensors in the back. We've also got a reversing camera as well, and it's it's quite um 
an advanced reversing camera shows you whereabouts you're going when you turn the wheel and it also illuminates an object so you you, you can visualize what you're going to hit or whereabouts you're going to hit it twin exhaust tips i'll just show you in the back now the back there is masses of room and you, you need plenty of room because you've got you've also got electric seats here and uh, these are, are memory seats you can set this one's never been used obviously it's never been set but you've got here blinds there's a blind on the back window but uh, you, you've got two TV screens here it's heated seats you've got your own air conditioning switches here just say little little pads to rest your your feet on but this is where this is where it comes into its own this panel here folds down then you've got your own controls for the TV screens and here on the side on the opposite side here that's for this side I'll just show you that that's reclining the seat if you can see so you've got uh, like that for relaxing or you can obviously set the memory for working as well but uh, let's see even that even the headrest is up and down so let's just uh, let's just do mine I could do with a, a a bit of a lie down today it's been very hectic so there you go pull that up put the seat back there you go and uh, I think gosh I could do with this in here you've also got uh, your own telephone there's Bluetooth in the front Bluetooth in the back by the look of it it's just an awesome vehicle to be in now I'll switch I'll, I'll try and video it from here let's see so here we go switch the video on switch the TV on there you go that's the the TV coming on you can switch that one on as well there you go this is your view from the back yes I could get used to uh, being chauffeured about in this Anyway, back to work, sadly. I'll take you for a drive in it now. I'll just tell you a little bit about the service history. Um, we've got, let me just, right, seats, cooling seats are on, just put the fan on a, a little bit. So we've got uh, three services in the book. 17th of the 1st, 2011 at 8,979 miles. That was done at um, Cooper Thames BMW. Then the 12th of the 1st, 2013 at 19,291, sitting at Sunningdale. And that's actually a four. I've chased it up. I didn't know what it was, but it's 24,357. Uh, on the 6th of February 2015 at um, Berry Chiswick. Now then, that's the service book. For whatever reason, um, when they got the service last time, they didn't take the service book in or get it stamped. So, uh, I, honestly, I despair. <laughs> and obviously not got a black pen or... Um, well I just don't know I just I really just I despair but anyway it's it's an invoice and uh, that's <laughs> you, you remember when you're at school and the, the teacher showed you how to fold a piece of paper up and then you'd, you'd cut half a, a, a little kid and open them up and they'd all be holding hands well that's what this reminds me of it's just it just makes me laugh 
how to ruin a, a very, very important uh, document. 14th of 9th, 2017, at 33,323 miles. Uh, it was serviced at uh, Rybrook, Worcester. Is uh, sitting a solid hole there. That was a battery. And uh, sitting a solid hole, 30,631 um, service. We also have the uh, spec sheet from no, that it came with from new. So the spec sheet. It's finished in imperial blue, Cyrillac metallic, um, dark blue metallic, lovely colour, and it's got this uh, saddle brown Dakota leather. It's just all like new. It's perforated leather that allows for the uh, cooling as well of the seat. So at the moment, it's just uh, blowing cool air through the seat. It's quite warm today, um, and I'll take you for a ride in it. It's uh, keyless ignition, so we've. Nowhere to put that uh, put that key. Oh, let me just show you something else which I've only just found. So the, the seats are electrically operated. If you can see this, the uh, little thigh extensions going out there electrically. You can move backwards and forwards electrically. The backrest, you can move backwards and forwards. But also, you can, that's the headrest. And then there's another little switch which I only discovered by accident before. And if you press that, hang on, if you press that, the, the top of the seat make, moves in. Hang on. There you go. The top of the seat moves in. So, uh, any. Um, I can't think of anything that's politically correct to say. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll skip that one. Okay, so that's anyway, two position seats for driver, passenger, and, and even in the back too. Power folding door mirrors. There's just so much, honestly. I could go on all day about this. Um, we've got... Uh, electric sunroof, tilt and slide, and then you've also got this uh, shade band, which I'll put it across. We've got TV, telephone, professional sat nav, sit, switch the sat nav on there, click onto option. You can have it on split screen. So you can have your onboard computer in the side and your sat nav there or, or something else, um, whatever you want on this right hand side. Map position, map perspective, journey computer, entertainment details. So there you, you've, you've got what you, what's on the TV and, and your sat nav too. Now then, let me just show you this before we set off. Um, these are all the options and it's got a heads up display. But one of the options here, integral active steering. Um, it's, it's a very costly option. It's uh, £1,017 and it actually means it's four wheel steering but I'll just show you from here. If we go into vehicle information, or the menu first, vehicle information, then up to owner's handbook, then I scroll round to I, and then we click across to I's, down here, independent, need to get down to integral, integral active steering, right, here we go. Animation, active steering. Play. Integral active steering varies the effect of steering wheel movements on the wheels depending on the road speed. Without integral active steering, a large steering wheel movement is needed when cornering, for example, on a hairpin band. With integral active steering, you can take the same bend with much less movement of the steering wheel. Okay, enough of that. Basically, what it means is, when you're going around a corner, your front wheels turn in the normal car, back wheels stay the same, parallel with the cars, the side of the, 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 the chassis. 
So when you go around the corner, you find yourself, when you turn the wheel, your back end comes in like so. And quite often, you can clip the curb if you don't go past the curb far enough. So in a normal car, you have to kind of go past the curb and then turn in and your back end kind of cuts across. With four wheel steering, it go, it, it kind of goes like, like so, and then the back end comes round. So in, instead of doing that, it, it comes round. It's good. It's a worthwhile option. It means you can maneuver in tighter spaces. Um, you, you can get out of corners sharper than you don't have to pull into the middle of the road. So you, you, your bonnet's not exposed. I'll just take you for a ride in this now and uh, we'll just get this aircon on because it is warm today. Mirror dips there when you put it in reverse. You've got reversing camera too. And the, the rear view camera will, I'll just take you to an obstacle, try not to reverse into anything, but it's showing you there. And then it actually shows you, it, it projects whereabouts the object is. So you, you know, you, you're not, you can, you can actually uh, see whereabouts it is in the back. Just show you the active steering here as we go around this corner dead easy to clip this corner because it's a real sharp bend but as you can see it's gone round it and uh, the because the wheels turn slightly the back end swings round rather than clips over the the curb height and reach adjustable electrically operated steering wheel i must remember or must try and remember to uh it's got lane departure warning. Just whip up the motorway now. It's been a long day today. And uh, editing this video, it's going to be a long night. Got this beautiful wood as well, um, which is also an extra. And heads up display. You won't be able to see it but I have tried to make a bit of a video uh, and I'll, I'll see if I can capture some more in a, sh in a short while. So we'll just go into nav there. Don't want split screen. Entertainment details, we don't want split screen, so there you go, that's a full screen, full wide screen. Now then, <laughs> I've just spotted a slight flaw in the heads-up display. If you have polarised lenses, unless you turn your head on one side, you can't see it. Um, they obviously, uh, they're designed to take the glare off objects, and they do, but they also take your heads-up display off. See, that really winds me up. Rather than just go behind you, they go in the other lane, accelerate, and then they go into a space that's not there. Now, I can tell you now, that's that lane departure warning, I know what's happening. I can, I can certainly feel it there. And it probably... For a big car, it certainly handles and uh, goes like the wind too. Now there again, the lane departure, if I just go over here, it's vibrating the steering wheel. 
again it's it's vibrating the steering wheel if I indicate no vibration so it knows you're going across the line or you should be going across the line um, and you've not just fallen asleep so as soon as you go across without indicating steering wheel it's like going across a rumble strip the steering wheel vibrates wakes you up Take you down the motorway. Just not that climb that's off automatic, it was uh, really blasting out. He's doing it again. So you can really tell the, uh, the integral steering, only a, a slight uh, steering angle input and you, you kind of fly around corners, that's, that's kind of a 90 degree bend there and I'm oversteering. Bags of power, is it 400 and something brake horse? And pretty economical for the size. Heated seats here as well. <sighs> Must be uh, work chucking out time. The part time is. Cruise control on, set, just going a bit too fast there, just slow down, it's, uh, you, don't, you don't know how fast you're going in this. So there you go, that's set at 70. 70 miles an hour, we're doing 2,000 revs. This annoying chap in the motorhomes hogging the middle lane. With his bikes on the back. There we go. Really smooth and quiet. Now, uh, when I 
went to work for BMW, they gave me a, the job that nobody wanted, the new lad, and that was prospecting. So I got a big, thick stack of prospects that hadn't been contacted for ages. And uh, the other lads thought they were doing me a disservice. But being new, I got on with it. And my second call was to a chap from Manchester who'd had a seven series for, I think about 10 years. And, and he bought it new and he'd had it for 10 years. I rang him, got through to him straight away. And he said, well, funny you should call me. He says, I was just gonna ring and order a new car. And he, he wanted, at the time, the, the equivalent of this car uh, with every extra on, completely every extra. But he also wanted the big wheels now, when we come to input, it, it, it cost, I think it was 80 grand then. It, it, was, a, it was phenomenally expensive. And he wanted the, the big wheels. Anyway, when we went on to order it, it wouldn't allow us to order the big wheels on the long wheelbase. So I put in a call to BMW and he said, you can't have the big wheels on the long wheelbase. Um, we, we've designed it to be quiet to be quiet in the back, smooth, absorb the bumps for, for business executives. We don't want the big wheels making intrusive noise. So I got back onto the customer and said, I, uh, I'm sorry, BMW won't fit the big wheels to, to the car. And he said to me, yeah, oh, no worries, uh, I'll buy a Mercedes. <laughs> so I said, whoa, hang on a second. Uh, what I actually meant is they wouldn't fit them, but we can get them through the parts department. And sure enough, he, he, he said, just fit them. Don't be ringing me. Do you know how much uh, my time costs? So we fit them, and I think they were about 6,000 quid. And, uh, well, I, th I think that was probably, up until not too long ago, the most expensive car I'd ever sold. But BMW wanted this car to be as quiet and luxurious as possible and they've certainly done it if uh, if you have a, a i don't know an executive hire company a limo company or or you just a big family that likes comfort this is the car it's it's superb it's like brand new the leather inside like brand new the only thing i can see the only thing i could be critical of and, and i would be being hypercritical and when I actually got in it, I couldn't really see where to pull the door shut because um, you can't. That opens the door, but it's the door. This this wood and the handle is contoured into the door, so you put your hand in there. And obviously, it's whoever's the chauffeur, I'm assuming, has uh, been married, and uh, as usual, your wedding ring has just caught the edge there. Nothing, nothing too bad. You can hardly see it. Um, but that's the only thing on the car. The rest of it is absolutely mint. You can use the weight of the car when, it, when it, you're steering as well. And probably that's something to do with the integral steering because uh, if you, you, you can just, not exactly back it into corners, but when you turn, The, the whole back end and the weight just helps you around the corner. It's so lovely to drive in. There you go, it's, it was just vibrating then again to tell me I was going over the line. Oh, what that one is. I'm pressing the button here and I've no idea what it's doing. It, it could be shooting oil out the back or something. Jesus, we better be getting a move on here. He's not hanging about.
twin screens in the back of the headrest as well and the the wide screen the big the you see the size of the headrest and you can control them from the rear armrest the rear armrest falls down and you've got virtually the same control here and two switches you've also got um, infrared headphones um, is that right infrared anyway no wires to the headphones put them on and uh, you get the sound through Xenon headlamps or the adaptive headlamps as well. The uh, illuminate the way you're pointing. So if you turn the corner, you don't just carry straight on there, they slightly tilt towards the direction you're going. Everybody's got their own switches. Right, for instance, here, if we just put the cameras on, you would be able to see past that car and what was coming. That's, that noise that's been going on all that time was a climate control, the independent climate control for the back seat. So you can hear how quiet it is without, that was on full blast.
Here we are back at the garage. Okay, I'll just show you how to set the sat nav in the uh, in this BMW 750. So uh, from any screen, click the nav button there. See the selector, click it to the left, click it to the left again, and then up to destination input, postcode, and we are Grosvenor Garage, Chorley Road, Waltonydale, Preston, PR. And then we need to go down there to numbers and symbols. Five, four, back to letters, J, S. And there we've got two choices, both the same, but we'll go for the Waltonydale one. Scroll down to accept destination and click start guidance. Please make a U turn if possible and then immediately turn right. Okay, so that's how to set the sat nav. We'll just turn that off, turn the speaker off, spoken instructions off. Right. Just show you how to delete a mobile from the Bluetooth system in the BMW 750 from any screen onto telephone, and then you see there add new device or paired, and you'll see my phone there. So if you just click to the right, you see there split screen, switch off control, Barry's iPhone, and remove device from list. That's what I want to do. So that's it. I'll just show you again highlight a phone, click to the right and it comes up there the phone switch off control display the, which phone it is remove device from list remove device from list so that's it okay i'll just show you how to pair a device to the bluetooth system in this uh, bmw 7 series uh, first thing we do is make sure bluetooth is on so that's on there then we go to telephone click telephone from any screen see their configuration of Bluetooth telephone services add new device or the phones that are connected so we want to add a new device please use your Bluetooth device to start search it's showing hands-free but then it'll change yes it's changed to BMW 5529 so we click on that and it's asking me for a pin so for freeze naught 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 pair you only have to do it once and then it brings up a screen there so again naught 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 and then select OK click OK connecting I don't want it to allow my contacts but you will so I'll click don't allow there and connected Barry's iPhone 10 that, that's it that's it done 